It is a well-established myth that the traditional Ozark culture closely reflected the culture of 17th century Scotland, Ireland, Wales, and England, and that its artifacts of speech, attitudes, music, and lifestyle remained unchanged well into the 20th century. Like most mythology that has grown in historical times, this one has some basis in recorded fact. Old ballads, some little changed, have been collected. Ozark people have demonstrated time and time again resistance to outside authority, a trait that can be historically attributed to many Scots and Irish people. The Arkansas Ozarks is a, is a place that, that I usually say is, uh, was settled by Americans. Uh, the, uh, in this, and that can mean any number of things. Uh, for the white population, what that meant was that by the time the Ozarks settled in the early 1800s, and especially the heavy settlement comes in the mid-1800s, uh, most of the people who come are at least second, a lot of times third or fourth generation uh, American born. An example of the settlers' fierce independence can be seen during the Civil War, when allegiances to the Union or Confederacy changed from homestead to homestead. As Union and Confederate armies pushed back and forth over the hills, they took turns destroying gristmills, bridges, crops, and anything else that might fall into the hands of the enemy. Both sides spawned irregulars, bands of armed men who patrolled communities all across the Arkansas Ozarks, recruiting soldiers at gunpoint and attacking homes, barns, and food stores of families suspected of being on the wrong side. By war's end, most of these groups were little more than thugs and more than one home was attacked by Jayhawkers, northern irregulars, on one day only to be ravaged by bushwhackers, southern irregulars, a few days afterwards. By the time Ozark men who could return home did so, little was left of the economy, of government, of law and order, and of hope for the future.